<clears throat> Hi, so uh, looks like we're live now. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our um, uh, group demo today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how to migrate machines from AWS to the GCP cloud. Uh, this uh, webinar will help to better understand the migration process running the Windows Replication Agent and um, migration and cutover processes. Uh, so my, my, my name is um, Julie. I'm Director of Engineering um, at Highstacks. And the agenda uh, of today's uh, webinar is the following. First of all, I will speak about Highstacks as a company. Uh, about our products, proceed with a short uh, overview of uh, ACRA, and eventually you will see a live demo of uh, the migration solution for GCP uh, with both uh, replication and failover processes uh, with access to, um, to the Windows replication agent. And uh, once the demo is finished, we'll move to the Q&A session um, uh, to answer the questions. Uh, so a couple of words about Highstacks, who we are. Uh, Highstacks is a global leader in uh, cloud migration and in cross, uh, cross cloud and hybrid cloud uh, just recovery. We have quite a uh, wide experience and we have already migrated uh, more than uh, 80,000 uh, machines and um, uh, protected more than um, uh, 5,000 machines, so quite a lot. Uh, with uh, our current product, uh, Hashtag Acra, uh, we have strong and deep uh, experience in, in cross-cloud uh, just recovery, protection and migration between public and private clouds, but um, also working with our partners and customers. Um, Using the clouds internally, we see how complex uh, they are, how complex cost uh, management could be. Um, and uh, including that every cloud has its own billing model, hundreds of resources uh, to, um, to evaluate and so on and so forth. It's uh, so hard to keep under control uh, the billing and to avoid the situation when you receive a bill and uh, that's uh, it, it's two or three times more than you uh, expected. So uh, that's why we decided to uh, create a hybrid cloud uh, management platform uh, for multi uh, cloud cost governance. And um, it's called um, uh, Opscale. Uh, we have already, already launched it uh, and um, I just wanted to mention a couple of words about this to let you know. Um, so moving forward, uh, here you can see a selection of the platforms uh, our solution works with. The, in this chart, it shows um, that we are true any to any. Uh, besides, Acre is not uh, just a tool or a set of scripts, it's a fully automated um, solution. We support any types of clouds uh, from the source. Um, VMware, Hyper-V, Amazon, uh, Oracle Cloud, and so on and so forth, and even, even um, bare metal servers. Um, as for the target cloud, we support uh, quite a lot of them. Uh, and uh, starting with, again, AWS, Azure, and other public clouds, and uh, our specialty is uh, OpenStack and uh, also flexible engine uh, that we also support. Um, uh, we have here we have four uh, four main points that I want to pay attention to, pay your attention to. First of all, live background, background replication to a target site, uh, which means that uh, which means that. Uh, from the replication side, uh, there is always a replication agent running. And either it's uh, an external or internal one, the process of replication, it's running in background. So it has no impact on the production source side and uh, sending uh, data to the 
target. And the second point is about agentless migration with external agent and, and no date loss. So uh, we have not only internal agents that are running inside uh, inside the machines, but also uh, we have an external agent for VMware uh, that is uh, working on a hypervisor level and um, uh, it replicates uh, all the machines uh, from this host uh, at once. So it attacks all the machines on the host and sends um, information data from all of the machines uh, to the target cloud. Um, there is no downtime while replicating and testing migration because the process is, the replication process is running background. Uh, and uh, that is the reason uh, why there is no need to uh, to stop production service from the source to to get the data to the target. Um, uh, there is a way to test, of course, the uh, the replicated data first before actual migration happens before the cutover to uh, get the state to get the maintenance uh, window and uh, actually plan. Uh, the full migration process. Um, and the last point that I want to talk about uh, here uh, is limited number of uh, test migrations and no disruptions that we uh, suggest to our customers. Um, we, we support a limited number of test migrations as soon as we have full replicas on the target site. Um, we provide access. Uh, uh, we provide them with the, with this access, and um, there uh, there you can see how the workloads uh, would really run on a new cloud. So you can run any performance tests. You can check the dependencies and so on and so forth. And <clears throat> and we can configure uh, different settings uh, if necessary because. Um, on different hypervisors, uh, the same amount of resources do not always give you the same performance, of course. And that's why there is a way, of course, to configure the flavors uh, that uh, the machines will get uh, on a new target site, the, uh, the storage uh, they will um, use, and so on and so forth. Um, but mm, that's actually it for the descriptive part. and. Um, let's proceed with the demo one. So uh, today I will show how to download and deploy Windows Agent, how to replicate machines from AWS to GCP, how to create a migration plan, how to run a failover of the replicated machine, and how to perform a cutover process. Uh, I have two machines right over here. Uh, one is running uh what is this windows server 2016 and this one and this one is uh windows server uh 2012 r2 standard version so here is my here is my acra and um i have already one machine replicated this is um the first machine i mentioned uh windows server 2016 uh, so I have already prepared a replication of this machine to speed up the failover process, not to wait until the, we get the machine replicated. But I have the second machine to to show the clean installation, to show um, some specifications around the configuration files and so on and so forth. Uh, where to get the logs, a couple of words about this uh, before we get to uh, to the migration plans. Uh, so, how do I get uh, replication agents? Um, two simple buttons. Uh, the, um, directly from the flow, here we have like the flow uh, um, describing all the steps, what, need, uh, what needs to be done to uh, successfully replicate machines and actually uh, migrate them, finish the migration with the Kotovo process. So, first of all, we need to install agents, either using this button or or this one, we get to the uh, to the download agents flow. Uh, today we're we're talking about the Windows replication agents. So uh, this one I'm interested in. 
uh, and um, here we set a group uh, of um, of the machines where I want this uh, particular machine to be replicated to. As far as the machines can be divided into groups, logically, for example, if I have a large uh, set of groups, uh, a large set of machines, sorry, uh, it will be hard uh, sometimes to to work with them, uh, having like uh, 500 machines in the same group and so on and so forth. So it's, um, it's recommended to, uh, to divide them into logical groups by some uh, project, by some uh, business application, operating system, or, or any other uh, meaningful reason for their customer just to better um, navigate um, in the interface. Uh, so I'm downloading the agent directly from the uh, from the Acro solution. Uh, the the downloaded agent inside that's my 2012. Yeah, 2012. Okay, so, so I have already copied the installation um, file right over here. It's an archive. And to start an installation process, I need I need to extract it to get it extracted because. Uh, here we have inside the archive, we have uh, an MSI file, uh, which is the installer, obviously, and the uh, configuration file. So if the installation process goes directly from the archive, there will be no ability to um, unzip uh, the uh, configuration file just on, on fly. And uh, that's why it's better to first unzip uh, the archive and only then um, proceed with the installation process. So uh, what do we have inside this configuration file? Um, it's better to use the other editor, or, sorry. Okay, with. okay, it's better, so, yeah. So inside the configuration file, we have information about what customer this agent is associated with uh, where is uh, the receiver on ACRA, uh, where is the REST API host of ACRA, what is the partner ID, uh, and so on and so forth. And also the SSL certificate that is used um, uh, during the replication process to, uh, to identify that uh, actually this agent um, is uh, fine with uh, working with this, this specific ACRA, sending information uh, um, to this particular ACRA and um, using SSL uh, during the um, replication process. Uh, this config file is a little bit is a little bit modified during the installation process of the installation process itself is quite quick, as you may see, and it's quite simple. Just uh, um, click one button. And when the uh, agent is installed, uh, we may check that the service that is associated with the replication agent, it's actually running in the services of the operating system we move to the high stacks windows replication agent here it is and we get the status of the agent it's currently running as far as the agent will uh, is is already uh, running um, the machine will appear automatically in the ui in the web ui of acro so there is no need to um, do any manual registration things just to wait until the machines appear itself. Um, uh, and I want to um, to tell a couple of words about uh, the the logging and the configuration files of the replication agent. So uh, we store um, configuration files and logs in the program data folder that is hidden by default. But of course, you may uh, you may use regular Windows um, tools to enable uh, unhidden files to uh, hidden files to be shown. So um, here are the folder with the logs where all the logs of the agents are of the agent um, uh, are written to. 
we we may check the logs uh, and uh, the log uh, always have um, the log has always uh, full information about the current state, uh, what happened to the agent, uh, what happened to the processes, and so on and so forth. Because that's why it's very useful to provide um, support with the logs uh, in case of any um, any issues with the replication process. Um, of course, I want to mention that uh, each replication agent, in case of uh, opened port uh, UDP 12.201, um, it sends uh, the logs directly to um, to Acro, to the ALK stack that is running inside Acro, just to store the logs um, in one place and for better and uh, <clears throat> more uh, uh, more deep um, the back process if that's required but also logs are also stored uh, locally and um, these logs can be seen by any um, any customer having a replication agent installed so here from this log i may see that the right uh, the replication agent is already uh, registered so if that's right if it's already registered i yeah i want to check that my mach my machine is right over here it's discovered right now and the, the next thing I need to do to start its replication just to click an appropriate button. That's it. The replication process uh, will start. The uh, replication agent will get the task from the uh, ECRO controller that it needs to uh, start a replication process to um, to create uh, VSS snapshots as far as we use um, regular Windows VSS um, writers to create snapshots to get the consistent snapshots of the machines. Uh, replication agents calls um, VSS um, service to uh, to flush the uh, data from the memory to get the consistent state, and only then uh, from this snapshot uh, VSS snapshot we uh, send the information to to Acra. But uh, that's only for the uh, initial replications. First, for the initial replication, we send uh, the information, uh, like full data of the machine, uh, full disks, and so on and so forth. But mm, doing the incrementals, we send only deltas. So we get deltas between two VSS snapshots via our, um, our driver that we've written to get the, quickly the CBT. Um, between two snapshots, and we uh, send these changes only deltas to the machine, uh, what makes the replication process very, very quick. Um, so, as far as our machine is already replicated, a couple of words, just a couple of words about uh, configuration files. Uh, um, <clears throat> we'll move forward to the uh, migration plans, uh, when we have uh, the machine replicated, what to do next, how to <clears throat> how to actually start it in the new target set, and so on and so forth. So two configuration files, one is named um, repman.conf. Um, repman um, uh, stands for the replication manager, and as far as the uh, the service itself, the replication agent, it, 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 it um, consists of two processes, uh, WinCBT process and Repan process. Um, uh, there are two configuration files. So replication manager, uh, it, it is the process that is actually communicating with Acura. That's why it has information about um, log stash host. Uh, it has information about um, about 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 Acura REST API receiver and so on. It has the secret to uh, to communicate with the REST API via secret. It has information about the group ID uh, where this machine belongs to, and it also um, there is also a way to enable uh, debug logging in case if it's uh, in case of some failure. Of course, it's uh, it's very uh, uh, important to enable the backlogs to get the full information about the failure, about the going, the ongoing processes, and so on and so forth. 
Um, uh, as for the CBT, uh, as for the CBT configuration file, it mostly has some information about um, uh, re related to the uh, Windows CBT, Win CBT process running uh, as a part of the agent. And it has information about uh, the snapshots that are taken by our tool, uh, about the IDs, all of this. Uh, that's like regular information that is received from uh, VSS. That's it. Uh, here, this way, we also store the information about the snapshots we, we create. Uh, and uh, we get the information uh, about the snapshots uh, that we need to, um, uh, to compare to get the changes. Um, moving forward to, uh, that's actually all about the configuration files that I wanted to mention today. Um, moving forward to the um, failover process, to the migration process, I will proceed that with the migration um, plans description. So a migration plan is like um, it's like a description of the machine, how it will look like in the target cloud, with what flavors it will start, with what uh, in what subnets, in what um, uh, CDRs, and so on and so forth. And also to modes that we provide a uh, basic mode uh, that is more like user-friendly mode with um, uh, with user-friendly patterns and so on and so forth. So uh, machines can be added here pretty, pretty uh, nice way. But as for the export mode, uh, that's like a regular JSON file, file and it provides uh, some more um, some more capabilities, for example, to set uh, failover IPs, uh, so, sorry, floating IPs, external IPs to, um, to the failover machines when this plan is um is done it, uh, it, it's saved uh, everything's ready to start the immigration process to uh, to actually launch machines in the target site but where to get this information obviously from the cloud as far as we're talking about the immigration to gcp today uh here is my gcp cloud and here is my project where I have uh, this instance, it's Acra. And where I have this instance, it's a, a cloud agent service instance that is uh, uh, that is responsible for writing data to the storage. And that is uh, included in some P2V and V2P processes because we mount drives uh, to this and attach them to this uh, service machine to do P2V and uh, V2V and partitioning. Uh, so, um, where to get flavors, of course. <laughs> I think everybody knows where to get the flavors from the um, cloud they work with, but just in case, um, uh, there is also some, uh, there's always some list in, the, in, in Google, of course, <laughs> where we can Google all the flavors and so on and so forth. But uh, here, in case of, for example, creating a new VM, there is a way to, a way to also get um, volumes uh, that are available for this project or for this uh, particular region and so on and so forth. So uh, this is the format that we need to use for uh, the flavor, the flavor name in um, in the migration plan. For my machine, I need uh, N1 standard one. That's why I'm using this. And as for the subnet ID, uh, subnet ID is also taken from the target cloud. In case of uh, GCP, it's uh, it's in VPC networks. So the subnets are named um, are listed uh, for regions. Uh, here I have only the default ones uh, for for the regions uh, that I have. That's why I will use this name default. Um, as a subnet ID right over here in the migration plan. Um, so I'm actually ready to start the migration process to start the failover process and launch my machine in the in my GCP cloud. I will click run migration and it will take some time for the machine to 
uh, for the machine to be launched. I need mm, compute. Uh, while this process is going, I will um, go back to my presentation and talk a bit about what's going on uh, from the process's point of view when we do the replication process uh, and failover process. So um, from the, in general, uh, the process is the same for all the replication agents. Uh, the purpose of the replication agent is to uh, read the data from the source machine and send this uh, data to, um, to receiver, that is uh, a service running on ACRA, and receiver sends information to, to the cloud agent that uh, has uh, volume attached and uh, that actually writes data to, uh, to volume or disk. And um, uh, I want to mention that replication agent, it uh, reads um, the source machine uh, by blocks uh, of data and it sends also information um, to the uh, target cloud uh, by by these blocks of data. Um, when the um, <clears throat> when all the data is sent, the volume on the target side it is uh, detached from uh, from the um, cloud agent, and there is a snapshot created for this particular volume. Uh, so this way we get the restore point, the uh, restore point for this uh, machine in the target cloud. And uh, these snapshots, these restore points are used to launch machines in failover. So um, when we do, when we uh, like click uh, on the button uh, run failover or create cloud side, the mechanism is the following. Uh, depending on the snapshot, uh, on the date uh, that is uh, set, specified during um, the, um, the the failover process i mean i mean here is what i mean uh, in my acura during creating a call side i am there is a way to set uh the time to which i want machine uh, my machine to be replicated to in case of migration of course uh, i will also uh, i will always um want my machine to be uh launched from the very last state so uh in, in the case of migration, uh, this snapshot time is always uh, set to the uh, recent time and there is um, no actual need to, to change it. But in case of uh, the cover, for example, just to mention this, um, uh, this time uh, can be set any, uh, this, uh, this time can be set any to uh, in the past and the closest restore point in the past will be used for uh, for the replication process, uh, for the failover process. So uh, the solution will get and will take the uh, snapshot that is required for the um, machine to be launched from. Uh, it will create a volume from this snapshot to boot a machine from. <clears throat> but uh, first of all, because before booting that machine, uh, we need to apply V2V. So we need to install the drivers uh, that is required for this specific cloud uh, to boot machine. Uh, we need to uh, to, uh, to do partitioning for the machine to just to get know uh, from which drive to boot uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so when, P2, when P2V is done, the, uh, the restored volume is detached from the, um, from the cloud agent service machine. And a new machine is created directly from this uh, from this volume. Uh, here we get a machine created uh, from the restored volume. Uh, one more uh, service that is involved into uh, the cloud side uh, or failover process that is orchestrator. Our orchestrator we use HIT uh, to orchestrate <coughs> the launching of the VMs uh, to. Um, to, to take into account the uh, dependencies that uh, may exist, uh, some delays, all of this uh, is configurable in the migration plans. And our orchestrator uh, manages this, uh, this starting process. 
Um, so let's take a look uh, what's going on with my cloud side. It's already running. So if I get back to, to my GCP, yeah, here is my machine. And I want to check if I'm able if I'm able to actually RAP this machine. I have already configured the network to be accessible from my particular place. So, so yeah, finally I can um, access this machine administrator. And the password is pretty complex, but I, that's why I don't remember it by heart. So, so <clears throat> when the machine is um, is running in the target side, uh, from this uh, from this starting process, I can get the um, the actual maintenance window that I need to um, to switch um, my uh, networks, DNSs, or what I need to switch from production to. Uh, from old production to new production. So for example, here it took uh, like maybe five minutes for the machines to, 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 to be launched in the target site. So I can count on this uh, during planning the, the cutover process and planning the um, maintenance window, the downtime of the services that it might um, take for them to be uh, finally migrated and cut over. Um, but um, I want also to mention that uh, we recommend our customers to uh, to do as much test migrations as they need to actually um, get all the information about the failover. I mean, uh, to make sure that all the services are migrated fine, that the machines are consistent that all of the dependencies are there that uh, networks are configured and so on and so forth before actually plan and do the cutover process um, to actually finish uh, finish my migration so let's imagine that now it's my final final cutover uh, I'm ready to uh, to like free my machine in the target side uh, in the target uh, GCP platform, all I need to do is just click this, this detach button. What will happen uh, next? It will remove uh, the cloud site from Acro. So you may see that there is no cloud site running my Acro anymore, but there is uh, instance still running in my target site. So um, this way we we do a cutover process. We just free a machine from our solution. But also one uh, thing that needs to be noted that uh, the snapshots are still stored in the target site. Uh, by default, for the migration uh, <clears throat> distribution type, we uh, <clears throat> we store only the last the last snapshot of the machine. But still, if I want, <clears throat> if I'm done with my migration, of course, I want uh, to remove some extra extra resources from my target cloud, uh, just not to um, not to uh, to store there some trash that I even don't need. So um, the next thing um, that needs to be done is just to delete a machine from the uh, target cloud, and uh, it will delete not the machine that we've created during the migration process during the failover process. No, it will delete just the uh, uh, just the snapshot and just the volume that were created during the replication process. So uh, for the failover machine, we have already created a new volume and it's independent from Acro. So this solution will, will have no impact on uh, the already migrated, um, on the already migrated uh, machine, machines. And uh, if this icon is still green, uh, it means that uh, my replication agent is uh, is up and running, and it's uh, still uh, able to replicate this old machine. But uh, of course, um, 
either if I delete this machine completely from my production, old production, or I just um, remove the replication agent, uh, the machine will completely be removed from Acura. But if, uh, if I just delete the data by, by clicking this button, by, but have my uh, agent up and running, it will again hurry a bit about the machine and machine will appear right over here in the in the discovered state without any data, but still I just uh, wanted to, uh, to pay uh, your attention to this point too. And um, one also thing that I uh, forgot to mention about the uh, replication process uh, before uh, starting the final, um, before, yeah, starting the final fellow of a process. Um, of course, it's recommended to uh, do um, as many re incremental replications as I need to get the very last state of the machine in case, for example, between my uh, initial replication, uh, between, yes, my initial replication and uh, my uh, current time, um, there was some, some long period of time. Uh, so, uh, mostly that's it about the demo part uh, for today. And I saw some question, um, how to add the target site like GCP. Uh, so when is the, when the, uh, when the solution is deployed, um, you first access uh, its IP address and it um, like redirects you to the initial configuration of the solution. Uh, so first you will need to set uh, the, uh, the GCP credentials to Acura in your uh, running in your project. Uh, Acura is also is always running the target site, so it'll, it will be running inside your, uh, uh, inside your GCP project. Uh, you will um, provide credentials to it, so it would be able to uh, call the uh, GCP uh, APIs to create machines, to create volumes, to create snapshots, and so on and so forth. But there is also a way to, to add a new cloud. Um, there is a way to manage clouds, to uh, create uh, customers and associate these customers with uh, different projects. For, um, for the GCP cloud, um, there are quite minimal parameters that are required to actually uh, add a new cloud, uh, set any uh, cloud name, uh, specify the zone, availability zone, uh, and a service account key that will be used by Acura to, uh, to uh, call the APIs and so on. So mostly that's it. Uh, from, from my side, um, I've uh, already explained everything that I wanted. Um, thank you everyone for your attention. Thank you for joining. Um, have, have a great Christmas uh, and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye.